Welcome to the Ultimate Meta Sounds Reference Guide, Envelopes. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the AD envelope, ADSR envelope, and crossfade nodes. For those who are not familiar, AD stands for Attack Decay, while ADSR expands a bit further and stands for Attack Decay Sustain and Release. These envelopes can help shape an audio signal. Let's start with the AD envelope. A generic AD envelope will look something like this. The attack time determines how quickly or slowly the envelope goes from point A to point B. The decay time determines how quickly or slowly the envelope goes from point B to point C. The attack and delay curves allow us to arc these settings. Leaving this value as 1 means that the attack or decay will be linear. Changing this value will cause the line to bow up or down depending on the value entered. We also have the option to loop this envelope to create interesting effects on the audio signal. Now let's move on to the ADSR envelope. A generic ADSR envelope will look something like this. In addition to our attack and decay, we also have a sustain and release. So in an ADSR envelope, instead of the decay going from the peak of the attack all the way back to zero, like it did with the AD envelope, we can set the sustain level to dictate the endpoint of our decay, hold that value, and then trigger our release to pick up where the decay left off and continue down to zero. In the example of using a MIDI controller, the attack, decay, and sustain would be triggered by the MIDI note on event, and the release would be triggered by the MIDI note off event. To wrap up this node, you can see that we still have our curve variables to adjust any of the inclines or declines, but what we don't see on this node that we had on the other one is the ability to loop this envelope. This is due to having a second trigger input needed to trigger the release. The last thing to note with this node is that on the right side, you'll find that we also have the ability to execute additional triggers based on whatever stage the envelope is at. Finally, let's move on to the crossfade node. For those of you familiar with working inside a DAW, you may understand a crossfade to be linear, fading from the end of one clip into the beginning of another one. The crossfade node within Metasounds, however, is more of a parallel blending. While the crossfade node comes with a number of inputs ranging from two to eight, let's use the two input node for our first example. As you can see here, the inputs are numbered just like you would find in an array starting with zero instead of one. We'll take two audio samples, an explosion and fire. Both of these wave files will be triggered at the same time and run into our crossfade node. With the crossfade value set to zero, this means we will only be hearing the audio that is going to input zero. Changing this value to 1 will then allow us to only hear what is being sent to input 1. The beauty of the crossfade value being a float instead of an integer means we can use values that fall between these whole numbers. So instead of setting this value to a solid 0 or 1, let's set this value to 0.75. This is where the magic of the crossfade node comes into play. With a crossfade value of 0.75, this means that we now hear both audio files playing at the same time, but we hear the audio that is being sent to input zero at only 25% of its original amplitude, giving the remaining 75% to the audio being fed into input one. Let's scale all the way up this time, and to show you more of a visual representation of what is happening, 
I'll also switch to a float crossfade and open the output log. In this example, we have eight inputs that I've set in increments of 100, starting with zero and going up to 700. Setting the crossfade value to any whole number between zero and seven will output the value of that input alone. If we change the value to something like 3.2, we end up with an output that is 20% of the way between inputs three and four and should output a value of 320. It's important to note that this value input is a clamped range, meaning if we have eight inputs, only values between zero and seven will be accepted. Any value entered below this range will result in a zero value input, and anything above this range will result in a seven value input. To see the full list of videos in this reference guide, click the link to the playlist in the description below.